p.m. on Friday, May 1st, 2020. Thank you for joining us. I am Janet Hill at the Rock Island County Health Department. Today we have with us Nina Ludwig, the Administrator of the Health Department in Rock Island, and uh, Ed Rivers, who is the Director of the Scott County Health Department. Uh, they have prepared statements for us today, but afterwards we are ready to, to answer your questions. Uh, please put them in the chat box, and as always, Brooke Barnes of the Scott County Health Department will be moderating the chat. Thank you very much. Nita, please start us off. Sure. For today, Rock Island County Health Department is reporting 13 new COVID-19 cases, which brings our total cases to 448. The death toll does remain at 10. There are 22 people currently hospitalized in Rock Island County hospitals. And uh, just to let you know, none of these cases today are related to Tyson. In Scott County, we've had four new cases reported for a total of 230. Uh, so far, that's 2,402 tests, and that's about 90.4% negative. Unfortunately, another death of a Scott County resident, an adult aged 41 to 60, was announced today. Uh, our thoughts go out to the family and friends of this individual. We're saddened to have now lost a total of seven. Scott County residents to the COVID-19 virus. As a community, we must remain vigilant and work together to protect, excuse me, protect those most at risk in our community. So some updates. Today, May 1, marks the beginning of some changes in Iowa as guided by Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds' proclamation on Monday, April 27. 77 of Iowa's counties are allowed to begin limited reopening of businesses and other establishments. This includes restaurants, fitness centers, malls, libraries, racetracks, and other retail establishments. However, Scott County is not one of the 22 counties where the governor has uh, allowed reopening and she has extended the closures and orders. Scott County establishments are to remain closed until the governor establishes new guidance. And Scott County continues to see new po uh, COVID positive cases. It's for this reason that the governor is keeping our county and 21 others closed. Recognizing that we have not yet reached our peak, we must work together as a community to get past it with the fewest cases, deaths, and hospitalizations possible. We can do this by, and here it comes, continuing to stay at home. We know it's gotten old and it's no fun, but remember, there are those in our community who must be out during this time, and when you stay home, you help to support and protect them. Also, keep yourself physically distant from those outside your household. You may not have the option not to go out to obtain essential supplies, but please keep six feet or more between yourself and others when you must be out and about. And don't gather in groups. We aren't just talking about formal gatherings. Even unexpectedly uh, encountering friends and other families when you're out can put you and others at risk if one of you are infected and you don't know it. You can spread the virus without having a symptom. Also, stay at home if you start experiencing respiratory symptoms. If you're experiencing symptoms of respiratory illness, fever, cough, shortness of breath, your body is telling that you're ill. And when you begin to have symptoms, you can definitely spread the illness to others. A positive or negative COVID-19 test won't change that. And finally, wash your hands. Wash your hands, wash your hands. This is, there's a reason this message has withstood the test of time. It works. And that's all I had to say about that. So Illinoisans are still under a stay-at-home order from the governor through the end of the month. The biggest cha change in the order is that residents age two and older who can tolerate a face covering need to wear one when they're unable to maintain a six-foot distance between people out in public. So our community partner, Medic, made a fantastic video about why face coverings are important and how you should wear them. 
we invite you to watch the video on TogetherQC.com or on the Facebook pages of both Rock Island and Scott County Health Departments. While the face covering mandate is the biggest change that started in Illinois today, it is not the only one. Other restrictions from the governor's previous executive order um, loosened a little bit today. So non-essential businesses for phone and online orders, retail stores designated earlier as non-essential businesses can reopen and take phone orders and fulfill online orders through curbside pickup or delivery services. Non-essential businesses that were closed under the previous order now include greenhouses, garden centers, and nurseries, pet groomers, retail shops for curbside pickup and delivery, hospitals and surgery centers and outpatient healthcare clinics can now do some non-emergency surgeries starting today. Also, golf courses across the state can reopen under strict guidelines meant to limit physical interaction, including allowing only twosomes to golf and no use of golf carts and spacing out of the tee times. The Illinois Department of Natural Resources will partially reopen 24 state parks, site visitor centers, campgrounds, playgrounds, and concession stands will also remain closed. However, no park in the Illinois Quad Cities will reopen, but some in northwestern Illinois will. So you need to check ahead if you're planning to go out to any park. Um, any employee who can work from home is required to. All travel is only permitted for trips to and from essential businesses to work and conduct essential business, such as picking up groceries and medications. Biking is permitted recreationally, provided you keep the six foot dip distance between yourself. You can also walk, hike, and run. And again, social distancing must be followed. Educational institutions can establish procedures for picking up necessary personal belongings. And dorm move outs must follow public health guidelines, including social distancing. Please watch for instructions from your own school district. Thank you. There's one other thing that bears mentioning in Scott County. You may have seen the governor's announcement about Test Iowa. Uh, there will be a site in Scott County starting next week, Wednesday, I believe. Uh, if you have any questions about uh, the procedures or the details of this, we've been asked to direct you to contact the governor's office. Uh, we don't have uh, very many details about it at this point other than its start date. And the fact that they're going to uh, try to ramp up to about 500 tests per day. Thank you, Ed and Anita. We will now go to the chat box and go to the questions. Um, we did have a couple of questions that came to us ahead of time, so we'll start with those. Um, the first one, Nita, you did mention this. Um, do you know how wearing masks will be enforced and will there be any fines? Sure, the governor has said that not wearing a mask is subject to a citation. However, he's also sa said that, you know, he expects people to be voluntarily compliant with his order and that certainly no one's going to be the mask police out there. So um, we do ask people to voluntarily comply with that. It's for your safety and the safety of everyone else in those retail establishments. Thank you. Um, the next question first will go to Nita and then Ed as well. Um, and it might be generally speaking, with Illinois possibly opening before May 30th, do you think the QC will be prepared to handle an earlier opening date? So we will, of course, be following whatever Governor Pritzker's um, guidance is for reopening. But I would say not to expect Illinois Quad Cities to open before May 30th. Well, the next time that uh, the Iowa side of the river in the Quad Cities may uh, be able to open will be May 15th. That's the date to which the continued restrictions were placed on the 22 counties that were not included in the reopenings. Uh, there was business guidance uh, issued to those 77 counties, which would be applicable uh, in Scott County. And we're looking at that and having discussions with the Quad City Chamber about uh, how to safely open uh, the Scott County side of the Quad Cities uh, if that becomes uh, a fact on the 15th or before May 30th. 
Thank you. Next question is for Nita. Could you give us an idea about when the Tyson cases started and how the numbers increased over time? Yeah, I was trying to scan our spreadsheet of that while Ed was giving his remarks, but um, all I can really say, I don't have hard numbers in front of me, but it looks as though most of those cases came about during the month of April. We sort of started off slow at the very beginning of April, which is really true of all of our cases, all of our positive cases, but then over the last couple weeks, um, they were a little bit more, but I'm, I'm glad to say that the last couple of days, they have leveled off. So that's a good sign, and I think that's a tribute to some of those mitigation efforts that the plant has been doing to hopefully calm down the rates of infection there. Thank you. I think that um, answered both of the questions that we've had submitted so far. Um, we'll give another couple of seconds. Please type in any additional questions that you may have for Ed or Nita um, before we conclude the call for the week. Um, Brooke, just to, uh, I think, to be clear, so we still had 92 confirmed cases at the Tyson plant, and there were none of the cases today were Tyson employees. So I think that number has held for the last two or three days now. Great, thank you. Um, to follow up to the information Ed provided on Test Iowa, um, that is something that all Iowans are encouraged to go onto the site and complete the information that's there. So we will make sure that that information is in the um, follow-up press um, release that we send out. And so we're encouraging Iowans to do that. It will be a system that is appointment-based. And so those who are provided um, a test through the system will then be instructed how that will happen with the drive-through um, service that's happening through that Test Iowa site and here in Scott County. So seeing no additional questions, thank you again, Ed and Nita, for joining today and for providing that information. Um, we're looking to have our next call starting on Monday. Um, so thank you again to our media partners for sharing this information, and we look forward to talking with you again on Monday. Have a good weekend, everyone. Thank you.